So we're gonna be showing it to Adam in the state that it is now. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not 100% happy, but it has a lot of the stuff that I set out to do. 15 minutes. Got to that point, like, you know, the more I touch this thing, the more I'm just gonna screw it up. As the deadline approached, I'm sort of going through my head and prioritizing the tasks I have left. Five minutes. I really just turned around and, and tried to make sure the other guys had what they needed, see if I could help them out. Awesome, 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 thank you. The jet nozzle is not installed. I didn't have a major detail piece on the outside. It's a mess over here in my corner, so I'm scrounging around the floor. So yeah, that was a little stressful. Down. Hey guys, welcome to the Adam's Cave. This is like the best toy store ever. Could have used these. All right, Adam, these are some amazing projects. Uh, what do you think? There's a lot of ambition in this room right now. I, and that's the thing that I find most impressive about all three guys really went way outside their experiential zone in terms of making and outside their comfort zone in terms of stuff they had practical experience with and that speaks well of everybody all right ron show us the completed project take us through it all right uh so we talked this morning and uh you told me i was doing it all wrong <laughs> <laughs> so this is the the absolute finest 14 hour steady cam i could come up with mm -hmm. with a little added bonus we just had it out on the sidewalk and the up down whatever i'm kind of you know, bouncing is, is good, yeah. but I don't have the hips to be a cameraman. Do I need the weight or is the weight only yeah. for the swing? Okay. So how does that feel? It's, it's a little tight. I, I had the caster and, and, you know, the, and the caster was free in, in two axes. So I, I just welded the single, the pivoting of the caster up in there. And then I made this, uh, this locking pin. Ah, oh, I see. What I do then, and I, I kind of get real gentle with it, but that's very respectable. You gave him feedback yesterday and today about how just how difficult a steady cam would be to make. Yeah. And at some point, do you think he could have just ab either abandoned the idea of a function, something that's functional, and gone something more aesthetic? I frankly would have liked to have seen that. What was the biggest mistake you made? I, I thought bearings on day one. I should have found them. Yeah. I should have found bearings. Obviously, this is meant to be like a working military. Maybe we we stole some uh, secrets from the Germans and you know steampunk rocketeer. I think. We yeah. Can. Let's see the reveal. All right. <laughs> Pretty good. Aesthetically, I think we can all agree this is beautiful. And on balance, when we talk about the mechanics, he was the least ambitious mechanically. Mm -hmm. He still, however, had never built a pair of wings before and surmised what he wanted to do to do with them by using the door closers mm -hmm. and the aluminum bar. I got the wings to kind of work. I did the, uh, the old pull cord, yep. <laughs> as oh, you yeah. suggested. This bugs me a little bit. And for something that otherwise looks so cool. Yeah, it could have been hidden with more flaps. It could have been done in the middle. This is an arrangement where once you've completed it and you look at it and you think, oh, it'd be better in the middle. It's about 40 minutes to probably switch these and move them into the center to clean it up a little bit. I feel like there's a crazy missed opportunity to have the caution hot sign from the bottom of the coffee urn on the jet engine end. I can't believe that that didn't I occur. Mean, my biggest mistake was spending too much time on the release mechanism. When I do something like this, you know, I want that cool function. And I do have a tendency to get stuck on those and I get frustrated because I would really want to figure it out. What are you the happiest about? Despite the uh, the release mechanism debacle, I am most happy with the wings. Like I like them so much that I want to go back and like keep fiddling with them. All right, Brandon, this looks pretty much exactly like a crossbow. <laughs> it does. How did the process go for you? It went all right. I got a walnut stock and I cut out from that big piece of walnut. It's beautiful. Uh, it's genuinely lovely. I love these angled edges. I know that he was probably waiting to hit this with a, mm -hmm. with you know the disc sander. The worst thing it was the selection of this um, this steel here. It's uh, way too heavy and it's um, not springy enough. I feel like this is the most incomplete based on his amb original ambition. Totally. You had a very specific order of operations and there are a lot of things you didn't get to. Like you can see that you sketched the trigger mechanism. Yes. I can tell you if I had made the mechanism, um, it wouldn't have been good enough because as soon as I pulled that back, it was so heavy 
It was on the other side, this was completely bound. I have some real experience with the release mechanism for these things, and it is a very difficult mechanical problem. And I, my first release mechanism looked exactly like that, and mm -hmm. it failed in exactly the same way. Most importantly, does it fire? It will project a pencil uh, at an enemy of your choosing. You ready? Yep. Five, four, three, two, yeah! Oh, <laughs> working crossbow. So Adam, at this point, do you think you have a good idea of who you might choose for your next assistant? This is tricky. I mean, these guys are all really well matched on balance of many different factors. And then they also really worked hard to help each other out. Like, even though this is a contest, they were really very egalitarian with materials and time yeah, and they advice. They were sharing materials, Ron was sharing uh, experience in the shop, Brandon was coming over and helping with other stuff. I mean, it was all around, everybody was helping each other, That's, which was really nice to see. And that these three tackled these three projects in the last 14 hours and came out with this, I do have an idea about who I think has come out ahead. Well, thank you guys for coming to San Francisco, uh, entering, building cardboard stuff, all, all of the things that you've done. Yeah, I have to say, sitting here and looking at these three projects, it feels like we could not have picked three better finalists out of the 300 that originally entered this contest. All three of you guys were really assiduous in going outside your comfort zone, pushing outside your boundaries, while every single one of these projects has its in incredible merits and you guys really did balance uh, a lot of difficult things. We went with the one we felt has balanced the aesthetics and the mechanics uh, the best and managed all of that, managed to achieve all of that, uh, and that is the, the Rocket Pack, Sean. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. That was it's a beautiful effort. The whole experience from the beginning end was great. It was a bit of a whirlwind. I, I almost didn't submit originally because I had a lot of other stuff going on, but I'm obviously glad that I did. Every single step of the process was 100% outside of my comfort zone. Every bit of it, totally worth it. I've never done any collaboration with uh, working in a shop type environment, um, so it was really fun working with other guys. They're both really smart and really fun guys. And thank you guys for watching the adventure. We had so much fun reviewing all the submissions, handing out those challenges, watching all your videos. It's, yeah. it's been great. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.